Now to talk about our presenter for the day, Dr. Nandita Shah. She founded Sharan in 2005. She's a recipient of the uh, Nari Shakti Puraskar Award by the president of, um, uh, presented by the president of India for her contribution to the field of health. She's also the author of the popular book, Reversing Diabetes in 21 Days. She's one of those rare doctors who doesn't prescribe medicines. In fact, she prescribes the opposite. She prescribes changes in your food habits and your lifestyle. She helps you get off medicines and get rid of your get rid of them and reverse your lifestyle diseases. She's had thousands of people prevent and reverse lifestyle diseases like hypertension, diabetes, hypothyroidism, obesity, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So over to you doctor. We are all waiting to see what you have to tell us. Thank you Seema for giving that introduction and thank you all of you who are here. It's so exciting to be here because you know one of the reasons I like to talk about diabetes is because I really feel that diabetes is reversible in most cases and the best part of this is that you can check it at home yourself so you can actually see the results and uh, you know before I start you know when we have, have diabetes we go to the doctor doctor gives us medicines doctor also gives us dietary advice like cut down sugar and cut down carbohydrates and despite all of this, haven't you seen that over a period of time, the medicines just spiral upwards and so do sometimes complications come in and other health issues. And so what can we do to prevent all of this is what I'm after, you know, and I really believe that all of this can be prevented. And before I start, I just want to call in Prema. Prema is one of our facilitators and Prema has herself re reversed diabetes. Not only has she reversed diabetes, but she has, her family members have uh, changed and got better. And yesterday I saw her daughter's father-in-law and he's within three sessions, he's also much better, but he's saying, that even his extended family had started following this lifestyle. So Prema, over to you. Would you tell them your story in brief? Hi, I'm Prema. I'm 62 years old. I'm a homemaker staying in Hyderabad. I have been diabetic for the last 18 years. And every time I would go to my diabetologist, my diabetic medicines would always be on the increase. And one time he told me that I had come to the end of my road with my oral diabetic med medication. And the next step would be insulin shots. That was when I told myself, I'm not going to take in any more pills and I'm going to take my health into my hands. And coincidentally, during that time, I happened to attend a workshop on reversing diabetes and hypertension under the flagship of Sharon, conducted by Dr. Nandita Shah in Hyderabad in 2019 Feb. I was floored and totally amazed and surprised by the delicious dishes given to us in breakfast, lunch, and snack. They were really, really delicious. All of them were oil-free, dairy-free. I said, if this is going to be the takeoff by dropping dairy, I dropped dairy on that day. 22nd February 2019 has been a red letter day in my life. I slowly reoriented my kitchen, started including a lot of green smoothies, fresh raw salads, seasonal fresh fruits, and only whole foods plant-based items in my diet. I also started taking consultation under Dr. Nandita Shah. And by the end of three months, unbelievable, I couldn't believe myself. I was totally weaned off all my diabetic medication. I was on 
high diabetic medication like Istavil, Amaryl, Glucobay for diabetes, Cardase for hypertension, and all of them were totally weaned off. I was also, I'm also hypothyroid, and my hypothyroid medication has been reduced by half, 50%. I am still working on it. I have become much more active, energetic, and calmer. I lost 13 kilos of weight. There has definitely been a total shift in my physical and emotional well-being. I still remember when I went to the U.S. for my fourth grandchild's uh, delivery, I really, really breezed through all the responsibilities of the household as well as taking care of the baby just like a butterfly. I also beat COVID at the time. Both my son and daughter-in-law, so I'm sorry, but my I'm sorry, both my daughter and son-in-law were down with COVID. And I beat COVID, I was taking care of them, and I totally attribute this to my whole food plant-based lifestyle following under the Sharon guidelines. My friends and my family are totally amazed at my transformation. Believe me, it has been three years since I've visited a hospital or a doctor. My immunity levels are really, really good. And I'm so happy. I vividly remember I went for the previous three deliveries to the US for my grandchildren by the end of the day, my body would ache and I would pop in pills after pills, painkillers by the end of the day. I don't have any aches or pains. I have to tell you this. I used to suffer from a lot of leg cramps. And after getting into this whole food plant-based lifestyle, I, have, I don't remember what leg cramps are. Health is wealth. This is what I'm going through now. My husband... And both my daughters and their families have got inspired by me. And they are also, they are also adapted to this lifestyle. And my husband has been responsible for enthusing and talking to his friends and relatives and getting them enthused to take consultations for reversal of diabetes and hypertension. We both are enjoying the health, which is the wealth of our life. Thank you. Sharon stands for Sanctuary for Health and Reconnection to Animals and Nature. And if animals and nature know how to be well, how can we be sick all the time? So today's topic, type 2 diabetes, a life sentence, definitely not. And you've seen that already with Prema. That doesn't mean that each and every person with type 2 diabetes can get uh, you know, can reverse it completely. Some people don't, but the majority of them can. So what is diabetes, first of all? And diabetes is an increase in the sugar levels in the blood. And why do we have sugar in the blood? Whenever we eat anything, it's broken down into carbohydrates and glucose. And glucose is required as a fuel for our muscles and many other parts of the body as well. And so in order to use that fuel, the insulin, which gets excreted by the pancreas, exactly according to how much sugar there is in the blood, the insulin is like a key. It opens receptors on the muscle wall and allows the glucose to enter the muscle so that the glucose can fuel the muscle and we have energy and we can do it, everything. You know, you must have heard before that we used to say glucose D for energy, right? That's exactly what it is. Without glucose, one doesn't have energy and one feels weak. That's why with diabetes, there are several symptoms. The first is weakness because the glucose can't enter the muscles and so you don't have energy. Now, with all the sugar in the bloodstream, we have excess thirst to dilute that sugar and then excess urination to throw it out. So the sugar gets thrown out through the urine, but 
we have weakness because it doesn't go where it's meant to go to the muscles in order to give us energy. And today diabetes is controlled through insulin or medicines. It's only control. That means sugar is high. We take medicines to reduce the blood sugar. And the reason we have to do that is because high blood sugar also causes an inflammatory response in the arteries leading to complications. But we don't want to control symptoms. We want to really reverse symptoms. And if you want to reverse any disease, what will you do? How will we reverse any disease? Actually, we have to change our lifestyle. And the way we change it is by understanding the cause and removing it. So what are the real causes of diabetes? You know, sugar is not the cause of diabetes. High blood sugar is the result of diabetes. The cause of diabetes is insulin resistance. Remember I told you that the insulin is not working anymore. And the cause of insulin resistance is what I'm going to share with you now. So the number one cause is fat. Fat, is it acts like a bubble gum in the keyhole of uh, the receptor. So it doesn't allow the key of insulin to work. So the first thing we have to do is reduce the fat in the muscle cell. That means even someone who's thin and looks like they don't have any extra fat may have fat lying in the muscle cell, which is causing this insulin resistance. Now, what helps the fat get out? It's fiber. Fiber holds onto the fat and ushers it out. And therefore, lack of fiber is also one of the causes of diabetes. We're going to talk about all these causes in more details, but I'm just going to list them here. The third one is hormones. Diabetes is a hormonal problem. And all the hormones are balanced. But if one hormone goes out of balance, other hormones also go out of balance. Chemicals are hormone disruptors. Stress, as you all know, often causes diabetes. Certain medicines cause diabetes, lack of exercise, lack of vitamin D, tea, coffee, colas, tobacco, intoxicants, all of these can raise blood sugars. So let's look at these one by one. As I told you, fat inside the muscle cell is called intramyocellular lipid. Intra means inside, myo means muscle, cellular is cell, lipid means fat. The fat inside the muscle cell prevents the insulin from working and so it prevents the glucose from entering the cell. Where is the fat coming from? It might be on our body, but it's often coming from the foods we eat. What kind of foods? Foods rich in fat are all animal products. You know, you boil milk, you get fat on top. Boil fish, you get fat on top. Meat or chicken. Everything is full of fat. And refined plant fats. That means all kinds of oil, ghee, vanaspati are 100% fat. And that's why we have so many cooking classes because we've all been brought up cooking with oil. The first thing we do when we want to cook is take a spoon of oil and put it in the pot, right? So how can you cook the exact same food that you've eaten and that you love without any oil, ghee or vanaspati is what we teach in our cooking classes, the techniques of cooking without oil. Now, what about olive oil and coconut oil? Often my patients ask me this. And the truth is that even olive oil and coconut oil are fats and all fats tend to diabetes. And therefore, we have to eliminate all these free fats. And as I said, fiber, fiber holds on to the fat and ushers it out. But we have a habit of removing all the fiber from many things that we consume. First of all, animal products have no fiber. There's no fiber in milk, meat, eggs, none of that. Refined foods. We have lots of refined foods these days. Oil, sugar, white rice, white flour. These are blatantly refined foods. But you know, we often peel our vegetables or 
take fiber out of fruits to make a juice and so on. And so we're losing valuable fiber in this way by refining so many things in less or more proportions. And of course, processed foods may also be refined. So instead of that, we need to eat whole foods. Foods as whole as possible. That means ideally dal should be without ch with chilka or uh, vegetables should be with their peels on. Don't peel anything that you can't peel with your bare hands. That, that means in vegetables, largely we'll peel onions and garlic and of course peas. And we might peel some, um, some tubers that grow underground like cassava and so on. But largely don't peel any vegetables. That means don't peel your lauki and bottle gourd and ridge gourd and bitter gourd and pumpkins or potatoes or beetroot. No matter what, don't peel it. Now, we need fats, of course. And where are we going to get good fats from? whole foods again. So peanuts have fat. And if you just blend the peanuts to make peanut butter, that's a good fat too. Or almonds or cashews or sesame or coconut. Or, you know, instead of sesame butter, you could have tahini, which is just blended sesame or sunflower seeds or avocado. All of these are good fats and all of these are things that we can eat all the time. And if you're going to cook without oil, then with our Indian food, we usually use coconut or roasted crushed peanuts or roasted crushed sesame. So we won't be deprived of fat, but we will definitely avoid all the bad fats, the refined fats. So whole foods, what are whole foods? Whole foods means Eat the part of anything that a monkey would eat. That means if you're eating the watermelon, you may throw out the rind or peel your bananas, but never your apples or pears or peaches, not even chikus or guavas or kiwis. But as a diabetic, you can eat as much fruit as you want. And you know, I conduct 21 day health uh, retreat every June and September often. And in this retreat, June retreat takes place in the season of mangoes. And so many people come, not just for diabetes, for all kinds of diseases. So many people come who haven't had mangoes for a long time. They literally come and gorge on mangoes. And they find their blood sugars go down. Because nature or God would never give us something that we love, which is bad for us right? Sometimes we make it into something that's bad for us. So fruit juice is never allowed because the fiber is removed, but fruit is allowed. You know, if you eat an orange, you might eat three oranges or four oranges, but if you have a glass of juice, you can have six oranges in just a matter of minutes. Then you will find a spike in your blood sugar. Here you see an image of peanuts and peanut oil and peanut butter. And what's the difference? Peanuts are whole. Peanut butter can be made with whole peanuts, just blended, but peanut oil is a refined product. And so though we can eat peanuts and peanut butter, we should not eat peanut oil. As sweeteners, instead of sugar, we would use dates or raisins. And you just have to see our recipes on our website. We have over 600 recipes, a whole lot of dessert recipes, and each one is better than the other. Now, here are some sweeteners that we should never use. Honey, because there's no fiber in it. And come to think of it, if you see a beehive, will your mouth water? No. That means God did not intend honey for us. We've learned to eat honey. Molasses, again, a refined product. It's the um, sugarcane juice that has been burnt down. And same with stevia. Stevia, the kind that we buy is actually refined, but even the leaf is so sweet that it'll make, you know, it keeps the sugar threshold high. 
Now, if you stop eating sugar, and some of you people who have diabetes would have stopped eating sugar, and then you know that if you eat something with sugar and it tastes too sweet, we want to reach that stage where sugar tastes too sweet, but now we can taste the sweetness in carrots and peas and even onions have sweetness. We definitely don't want chemical um, sweeteners like xylitol, but we also don't want natural sweeteners like agave and maple syrup or even jaggery because none of these have fiber. <clears throat> so we are going to replace uh, refined foods with whole foods. For example, replace white rice with whole rice. And here you can see three kinds of rice. Brown rice, red rice, and even black rice. Rice is like brinjals. It comes in all different colors. But when you remove the outer skin, all the rice is white. We don't want to use any of these refined rices. We want to use whole rice not even the Kerala red rice, which is hand pound or any hand pound rice for that matter. We want to use completely unrefined rice. Now diabetes is a hormonal problem and many people who have diabetes also have other hormonal problems like hypothyroidism or PCOD or infertility. And that's because all our hormones are orchestrated by a gland at the back of our brain called the pituitary gland. And when one hormone goes out of balance, other hormones also go out of balance. And this hormonal imbalance is harmful. But how does this hormonal imbalance start? Because we're consuming hormones from outside through milk and meat. You know, only animals produce hormones. So if we consume animal products, we are likely to consume hormones as well. And these are going to affect us. So today in an age when we eat more animal products than ever before in the history of man. And that's just because we have refrigeration. And we have a animal agriculture system that keeps on throwing out more animal foods and commercialization of all this food. Because of all this, we're consuming more animal products than ever before and we have more hormonal imbalance than ever before. India was a country of in over fertility. We had, you know, one of the largest populations on the planet. And today we have infertility clinics everywhere. This is because of hormonal imbalance. So as I said, hormone, when one gets imbalanced, others do too. And that is one of the causes of diabetes. Hormonal imbalance can also happen because of medicines that are hormones, like oral contraceptives or steroids. And, uh, you know, even vitamin D is a hormone. So if we have too much vitamin D or lack of vitamin D, this can also literally cause diabetes. So it's very important for each one of us to check our vitamin D and supplement if necessary. And then, Chemicals are hormone disruptors. Where are the chemicals coming from? Chemicals might come from food like non-organic food or packaged food, or it could come from personal care products. Like we never really look at the ingredients in our toothpaste. But if you look, if you look hard for those ingredients because they're hidden somewhere, if you look hard for them, you will find that they contain mostly chemicals. And then all the things that we put on our body, they get absorbed. Like for example, if your skin is dry and you put oil on your body, after some time it gets absorbed, right? In a very short period of time. Things that we put on our body get absorbed in less than 26 seconds. So all those soaps and shampoos and perfumes and deodorants and hair dyes and lotions and potions and hand sanitizers, all of these things can cause damage. And of course, we're using more of them than ever before. And as I said, medicines are also chemicals. 
And there are some medicines that actually induce diabetes. That means the side effect of those medicines can be diabetes. And these are uh, steroids, then thiazide diuretics. Many um, people with blood pressure are given these and even um, people with certain other diseases where the water needs to be flushed out can be given these. And then blood pressure, certain blood pressure medicines can cause this. Antipsychotic medicines can cause this. And statins, these are used so commonly, can cause a rise in blood sugars. And therefore, that's one of the reasons that I want to minimize medicines to the extent possible, because I know that so many people are getting, you know, we take one medicine, the side effects cause another disease and another disease and so on. And then there are home care products, which are also chemicals, like the window cleaners and toilet cleaners and phenyls and air fresheners and mosquito repellents and you know some people even use fabric softeners so their clothes are always smelling forever all of these smells are or even agarbattis all of these smells are chemicals that we can inhale into our body and then there are chemicals in our kitchen like have you noticed that when you drink bottled water it actually tastes different than water and that's because the chemicals from the plastic are leaching into the water. Or aluminum also leaches into food, especially sour food and non-stick. And so these things should be totally avoided. And then, of course, there are environmental pollutants. And, you know, India is getting more and more polluted these days. And we can do something about it by stopping using all these things or minimizing our use of plastics and disposable items. So we can minimize chemicals in various ways, start eating organic foods and avoid packaged foods and reduce medicines to the extent possible and reduce personal care products or use more natural replacements and reduce home care products and use natural replacements. Now, dairy is another big cause of diabetes. It's really hard to believe, but if you don't change anything, but just stop consuming all dairy products, you will see your sugar levels go down. And one of the reasons is that it contains insulin-like growth factor. Insulin-like growth factor is found only in dairy. It's a growth factor to make a baby grow, but it looks like insulin. And it takes the place of insulin on the receptors. So it's a little bit like insulin is a key. It opens the receptors. But now, instead of the insulin key, the IGF enters the receptors and blocks them. You know what happens when you put a wrong key into a lock? It goes in. It doesn't open the lock. It doesn't come out either. And now you're stuck. That's exactly what happens with IGF. And that's why dairy is so harmful. IGF causes insulin resistance, as I said, by taking the place of the key of insulin, you know, taking the place of insulin in the receptors. So dairy is harmful in so many ways. Number one, it contains fat. Number two, it has no fiber. It also contains hormones because dairy is the secretion of a female mammal. It contains estrogen and progesterone and growth hormones and IGF and prolactin and so many other hormones. And then it contains chemicals because, you know, those cows are not eating um, food that is organic. In fact, so many times I see the cows, I live in a rural area and I see the cows eating in the garbage, uh, you know, where people are throwing their garbage and drinking from water, which is going down through nallas, where, you know, people are washing clothes on the road and all that detergent goes into the uh, nalla and then the cows don't have any place to drink. So they're drinking that water. 
But all this comes back to us, right? And then of course it contains IGF, and it's a foreign protein and that we won't talk about because that has to do with type 1 diabetes. But it also contains free radicals, which cause inflammation in the arteries and in the body. And last but not least, we said that stress is a cause of diabetes. And when we consume any animal product, we are consuming stress hormones. Because a cow is not happy to give her milk to us. A cow is tied up, her baby is taken away from her, and her milk is taken to the market. So a cow is always stressed. Similarly, any animal product that we consume, the animals don't give themselves willingly to the slaughterhouse. They fight for their, the only thing that they own, which is their life, till the very last moment. And so they are full of stress. So they contain adrenaline. The animal products or the milk contains adrenaline. And you will find that if you stop all animal products, your stress levels go down. I'm not saying that the stress will completely go away because the stress may have come from outside, but a lot of the stress goes down just by stopping animal products. It's amazing. People say that they change their state of mind completely from stopping these things. Now, a few other causes of diabetes, I talked about stress and we can't go into stress in great detail here, but you know, our modern lifestyle causes stress. And if we can look at those stress triggers and reduce them, we can get healthier faster, right? Like, for example, one great stress trigger is the alarm. You start, put an alarm to wake up in the morning. That's stress. Instead, what can we do? Go to bed earlier. Stop all those digital games and TV and mobile phones and social media. I mean, not all social media because Sharon, social media is good. But, you know, sometimes we are doing too much of social media, aren't we? And um, lack of rest. Our body heals when we rest. So we really need to get good eight hours or as many hours as you need of sleep and some at, at the right time. So sometimes we are staying awake all night or even working at night and sleeping during the day. And these things also cause disease. And lack of exercise. And tea, coffee, colas, alcohol, smoking, tobacco, all of these raise blood sugar. So we should ideally minimize all of these. Now, I know that this talk can sound a little scary because every change is difficult. But all these changes don't need to be done overnight. If we are aware, then we can reduce and reduce and start getting better results right? So in summary, fruits and whole carbohydrates are not bad for diabetes. Fat and refined carbohydrates are dangerous. The biggest en enemy is milk. And chemicals are hormone disruptors and lack of vitamin D contributes to carbohydrates. So we can have any food that God has made for us whole fruits and whole vegetables and just start learning to cook in Sharon's way and we can get healthy really fast. I'm going to temporarily stop my screen share and I'm going to hand over the um, mic to Palak. Palak is with me here and Palak has helped her mother reverse diabetes. So Palak, would you like to share that story? Palak, can you put on your camera, please? Yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm Palak Jain from Ahmedabad. And uh, but just before you go ahead, many of you must have seen Palak. Palak is one of our greatest cooking instructors. She loves to cook. So um, you may already know her, but Palak, please do share your story. Yeah. 
Uh, thanks, uh, doctor, for the lovely introduction. Hello, everyone. I'm Palak Jain from Ahmedabad. Uh, I'm a facilitator with, with Sharan and I take cooking classes. In September uh, 2020, my mom was diagnosed with diabetes and uh, the diabetes level was so high that even with the medication, the tablets, uh, uh, doctors were not able to control it. So they had put her uh, directly on insulin just after 10, 15 days of uh, knowing that uh, she, she has been diagnosed with diabetes. Uh, that all went on and she, she had, and I was able observe, I was just observing her. She had become a lousy person. She won't uh, like to move. She, uh, her moods, uh, were not like she used to be the bubbly mom and everything fun loving mom and grand, uh, my, even my grand, um, my kids, uh, I mean, her grandchildren also started to complain what has happened to Nani and everything. Uh, then in April, 2020. Uh, her knee started uh, to pain, so we thought to have a uh, knee surgery, although I was against and I knew that let her come uh, in Ahmedabad and um, I'll just um, convince her. And luckily I got, I convinced her, uh, we took to her knee surgeon and to my surprise, diabetes level were 300 to 400, in, although she was taking uh, fias and lentils, um, which were of very high dose. Uh, but still uh, diabetes was not coming in control. So I just told her, you just delay this surgery and just try Sharon lifestyle once. You can stay with me uh, for one or two months. I am going to guide you. We can take a consultation. We took a consultation from uh, Sharon doctors and within one or two months, her uh, insulin injections got reduced to one third of it, what she was taking. And uh, I was able to see a difference in her. She she started to uh, go uh, love going to the walk uh, again. Uh, she was in a great mood. And best of best part was that she started helping me in my recipes. You know those things which I was stuck. She was like, okay, this is so easy. You can do this and this and make it oil free and sugar free and all. So initially for. Uh, 15, 20 days, I was teaching her. Later on, she started teaching me. It happened like that. And um, so I was very happy to see um, uh, my mom back. And luckily, we had delayed the surgery and her insulin are much better. She's doing much better now. And if you talk about me, I was able to reverse my hypertension, which doctor have told me that you have to take a um, medication. But uh, within 20, 15, 20 days, since it was on very initial le level and, and I came to know about Sharon, uh, I was able to reverse uh, it very easily. And I'm doing really very great. And I just enjoy taking cooking classes for all of you. Thank you, Palak, for that uh, description, because, you know, I know that so many people are scared to cook without oil and all those things. And it's so wonderful that, you know, your mother who was resistant could get into it so much that she could teach you who are, you are teaching so many people. So that, that's how easy it is to cook without oil once you get into, once you learn the basic techniques, because the basic techniques can be applied everywhere. Isn't it true? Yeah, true. Very Thank true. you for that, Palak. So now I'm going to go back to my screen share. Okay. And so what we have to do is follow Sharon's five-point plan, which is that everything should be plant-based. Everything should be whole. We described this before. Everything should be organic. Like I saw in the chat box that someone had written that over here in the UK, we get um, apples that are with wax, right? But if you get organic things, they won't be putting chemicals or wax on it. So please get the very best quality because, you know, if we spend on health today, we are going to save a lot of money from illness tomorrow. And then vitamin B12 and vitamin D should be checked and supplemented uh, as soon as possible. And this is for everybody, whether you're diabetic or not, whether you follow Sharon's lifestyle or not, almost everyone can have vitamin B12 and D deficiencies. They should be checked and supplemented. We already saw that vitamin D deficiency, vitamin D is actually a hormone. Vitamin D deficiency can cause diabetes. It can cause other problems as well. 
So now why should we reverse diabetes? You know, Palak's mother's knee got better when her diabetes got better. So there are so many complications of diabetes. There's adult blindness and gangrene and amputations. And, you know, I live in a place where we have a healing center and there's a cook there. Or rather, there was a cook there. He's no longer there anymore. And that's because he got diabetes and he had an injury. And then it turned into gangrene and one toe was cut off and another and another. And then it still didn't all heal because the blood sugar couldn't get controlled. And finally, they've cut off part of his leg as well. Now he's home. He's better. But... You know, I wish that he would be following my guidelines, but he's a cook. So he was, you know, cooking so many things and so fond of food that um, he's suffering from it today. And diabetes and also hypertension or both of them can lead to kidney failure. And diabetes can cause cardiovascular problems and neuropathy and increase chances our chances of heart disease and stroke. And it can also cause impotency. So many people suffer from impotency and this can be one of the early signs of diabetes. And in women who are pregnant, if they have diabetes, gestational diabetes can be dangerous both for the mother and for the baby. And so it's so important to get these well. Now, there are certain medicines that diabetics take which are so harmful that they can lead to insulin-dependent diabetes. That means they force the pancreas to secrete insulin and force and force and force and burn out the pancreas. And then doctor just says, okay, now the medicine doesn't work, take insulin. But we can prevent this by knowing which medicines they are and avoid them. So these are the sulfonylureas, largely glimipiride and glipizide, and they come under the trade names of amaryl and gemmer and reclide and glynase and diabeta and glucotrol. There's so many of them, actually. So these are some things that we should avoid. We should be careful about which medicines um, we take because you know when you start taking glimipiride immediately your blood sugars come down and you say oh wow doctor give me a great medicine but in the end you will become insulin dependent so these are some of the medicines that i take off as soon as possible now some myths about diabetes sugar is the cause of diabetes and we talked in the beginning that the result of diabetes is high blood sugar. The cause of diabetes are all those causes that we mentioned. That means fat, lack of fiber, hormones from outside, then stress, lack of exercise, lack of um, rest at the right time, and lack of vitamin D. These are the things that we really need to look after. People with diabetes should not eat fruit. No. If you were to go to a farm or an orchard and you see fruits and vegetables, instinctively you will pick fruits first. But if you eat the fruit, please don't peel the fruits that you can't eat, peel with your own bare hands. You know, I've seen in our 21-day retreat that some of the uh, participants, not me, but some of the participants, even eat the mango with the skin on. And we know that you can eat mango skin because in our pickles, we leave the skin on, isn't it? So if you have those man mangoes with very thin skin, do try them with the skin on. And then low carb, high fat, keto diets are good for diabetes. No, these kind of diabetes will, these kind of diets will reduce the uh, sugar immediately. But when the fat collects, then diabetes comes back and so does weight gain and so does high blood pressure and other diseases. And medicines, medicines never cure. Nobody has got cured of diabetes with medicines. So we must remember that. If we know that medicines don't cure, 
then we have to look for another way. I always used to wonder that how do so many people go to the same doctor for treatment of diabetes that cured nobody up to now? And I just know that it's because we as humans like to do what other people do. It's a habit. People with diabetes should eat every two hours, not at all. You know, we have to do what the animals do. Live and eat by instinct. So eat when hungry, drink when thirsty. The cor corollary is also too true. Don't eat when you're not hungry. So we've been told a lot of things and this is our conditioning. And when a lie is repeated often enough, it takes in our mind the form of truth. And sometimes it's difficult to change our conditioning. It's difficult to drop the foods we used to love, but there are alternatives to everything. And you could see that Palak's mother probably didn't listen to her before, but when Palak brought her home and said, in my house, there's no dairy, and she found out that the food is delicious, it was easy to do. Now, before I end, I want to give you some references. This is Dr. Neil Barnard's book, Dr. Neil Barnard's program for reversing diabetes that really, um, I could say that it inspired me to start conducting diabetes reversal programs. This is my own book, Reversing Diabetes in 21 Days. And this is good for Indians just because it has Indian recipes and works on Indian psyche. This is Dr. Gabriel Cousin's book, There is a Cure for Diabetes. And Dr. Joel Foreman's book, The End of Diabetes. Now, reversing diabetes requires a shift in consciousness from a culture of disease to a culture of health. And, you know, we have here with us Dr. Lakshmi. I'm just going to stop my screen share for a moment. We have here with us Dr. Lakshmi. And Dr. Lakshmi is one of our consultants and she has been uh, working with diabetes foot in hospitals and now she's working with us since the last two years and Dr. Lakshmi would you like to share with them what you've observed in the last two years? Sure. Uh, good evening everybody. I am Dr. Lakshmi based out of Chennai and I'm a lifestyle medicine physician and uh, yeah uh, I've been working in a diabetes center preventing amputations in diabetic feet for about three decades now. And, uh, you know, when I work in a hospital setup, you see patients coming uh, with no reduction in their sugar levels, with medications going up. And the approach, the entire approach that the training that we've had is towards treating illness, a symptom of a disease. And at some point in my life, I wanted to move away and move towards a wellness approach. And that's what made me uh, qualify in lifestyle medicine and practice as a lifestyle medicine physician. Uh, so the last two years, uh, my association with uh, Sharon has been the most rewarding you know, journey because I've been treating a lot of people with diabetes, helping them go off medication. Okay, when they move away from a, a refined product or animal product based diets, even vegetarians from a refined uh, diet, ultra processed processed diet to a whole fruit plant-based diet, they definitely start dropping their sugar levels and many of them can go into remissions and can have the medications stopped. And even on a vegetarian diet, what we find is many of them do not have the prescribed serving of vegetable or fruit. Many are scared to eat fruit. Even in, in my hospital setting, many of them eat mari biscuits, but they are scared to eat a mango. Now, mari biscuit is completely refined and uh, you know it's absolutely not good. Whereas a mango will not increase sugars. And this is a season for mangoes. You could try it yourself. Have a mango smoothie or mangoes for your breakfast. You will see that your sugars don't go up when provided you cut off all the refined products in your diet and animal products. Um, so that is something uh, that's been an amazing journey for me as well. So when patients do that, not all of them respond the same way. We do have different kinds of responders, but at least 50% of them do uh, stop, uh, you know, start 
going off medications within the first two, three months. And another 25% would definitely do that in six months' time. A small proportion of patients have to be on medications for a longer time based on the duration of diabetes they've had or the amount of insulin the pancreas is secreting and the number of medications they've had over the years. A lot of factors. But uh, what is very beneficial is the fact that these patients, uh, this diet helps them because this diet is rich in nutrient. It's a highly anti-inflammatory diet. Uh, and we see them having benefits, like many of them with a burning pain in the feet. The burning disappears. The neuropathy gets better. Then we see them, uh, the cardiovascular health improves, energy levels improve. And we know this chronic metabolic disorders can cause cancer and can cause a lot of other host of problems to the person. Dr. Nadipa has already enlisted the complications of diabetes. And we see that other organs not being affected because the diet is very clean. And along with the diet, we do offer other lifestyle changes like exercise, working on their sleep or stress, and other parameters that have uh, bearing on the sugar levels of the patient. And uh, to give you an example, I do, um, you know, I was treating a young uh, lady in her 30s uh, for diabetes, and um, she had an eye issue. She had a retinal issue, and uh, she was, she asked me if she could go to a doctor and get the intravitreal injection done. I said, yes, you're very young. Please go ahead and get your eyes treated. She'd already seen uh, her off there before she started the program with us, and then she was visiting him at the end of about two, two and a half months. And the ophthalmologist said, you don't need any injection because the inflammation in your eyes come down tremendously. And I see huge improvements. And this is the power of a whole food plant-based diet. So remission is possible, uh, provided you make the lifestyle very sustainable. And that's what uh, we do at Sharon. We have cooking classes, we have hand holding, where we slowly help you transition into a whole food plant-based diet which is sustainable. It's not a, uh, a diet prescription where you just go on this for about four weeks and then you're off it. This is a sustainable lifestyle change that we recommend and which improves your overall well-being. Um, so it's possible. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Lakshmi. And Dr. Lakshmi has been doing a program which is six weeks long called Defeat Diabetes which is done with a cooking instructor as well, so as to make this all sustainable. And she's got really good results. So there's individual consultation combined with talks and combined with cooking demos that makes it so successful. Thank you, Dr. Lakshmi, for all that you do for all those patients at Sharon. Thank you. Okay, so just I'm going to end very soon. I know I have two minutes left, but I am going to open for questions after this. And I do want to answer as many questions as I possibly can. Okay, so I'm just going to share my screen and end right now. Um, okay, we talked about reversing diabetes or any disease requires a shift in consciousness. We have to shift from a culture of disease that everybody that we know is living in now to a culture of health. And that's what we help you do at Sharon. So how can Sharon help you? We have free publications that you can get. If you go to our website and go to About Us publications, you will see these. And there are recipe books in three languages just so that you can download them or you can even buy them in hard copy and start using them. And we have about 70 to 80 recipes in these books, but we have about 600 recipes on our website. So try both of them. And then this book, Reversing Diabetes, that I already told you about, it's also available in Gujarati and the Hindi version is coming out through Penguin 2. And then we have a 21 day online diabetes reversal program, which is a pre recorded program with audio visual to help you. And, you know, each section also has a movie that you can go to, which covers all the important things of that section and lots of testimonials to inspire you all the way. And of course, we have the consultations. 
So if you go to our website, you can see right in, and actually I'm going to go to our website and show you all of this right away so that you won't be lost. If you go to our, can you see my uh, computer screen well now? Yes, doctor, we can see. Okay, so if you go here, you can just go here to book a consultation or you can even go to health programs and book a consultation. And here's where I was saying the publications are. And here are all those recipes that have been um, put in different categories so that you can try all of these things and get well, right? Um, I'm just going to see if I have anything left to share with you. Just give me a second. No, that's basically it from me. That's all I wanted to share. And now I'd like to open to question and answers. Yes, doctor, there are a few questions. Uh, yes. I ask, can a diabetic person have oats with coconut milk, peanut, walnut, cashew milk and fruits in breakfast? Okay, so, you know, uh, I, this is a short program. I haven't been able to tell you everything about Sharon. Uh, if you are having oats, you should not have white oats. You should have whole oats or rolled oats. Ideally, we don't mix fruit and oats together. So it would be, in, here's what you could do. Check out our uh, porridge recipe or overnight oats recipe on our website. That will give you a good recipe to use. Uh, MB says, is there any hope for diabetes one patient? Okay, so it depends on why or how you got type 1 diabetes. But I've seen type 1 diabetics even in our 21-day program. And within 21 days, they reduce, they're able to reduce their, their medicines, I mean, their insulin by to about one third. That means... If they're taking 25 units, they can come down to just eight units of insulin when they leave. Now, getting out of those eight units will take a long time because type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease and autoimmune diseases do take a long time. If you want to learn more about autoimmune diseases, we do have a um, video of the, about that in on our YouTube channel. So do have a look at our YouTube channel. Nangarajan asks, how do I start the change? You start the change by doing everything that you heard today. Okay? And then simple ways. You can buy my book and start reading and do it. Or you can take a consultation and consultations are really useful for people who are on medicines because somebody has to help you reduce those medicines, right? And um, yeah, uh, or you can take our online program, but if you're on a lot of medicines, really the best is consultations. Raj Gopalan asks, can a diabetic eat jaggery? No, that's what I said, remember? That, di uh, that jaggery is a refined product. So a diabetic can eat as much sugar cane as they want. Because if you eat sugar cane like this, and then like this, you can't eat more than six inches. God or nature has already taken care that we cannot overeat sugar cane. But when we have jaggery, you know, to get sugar cane juice, you need three sticks of sugar cane to get one glass of juice. That's boiled down to make jaggery. And that's further refined to make sugar. These refined things we cannot have. Shankar asks, how do I manage with a recommended diet if I'm planning to do a marathon? Oh, you will have more energy with this diet than any other diet that you may have tried before. Manoti asks, can we have curd and buttermilk? Um, well, that's what we said. No animal products, including no dairy products, no milk, cheese, butter, cream, paneer, ice cream, curds, buttermilk, or anything that's made of it, not even ghee. But look, please don't feel like 
a deprivation because we have fabulous alternatives for all of it. If, you know, Palak's mother could get into the swing of things in such a short time, so can all of you. Meena Kumari asks, what is the best breakfast for a diabetic person and which fruits should be avoided? Okay, so good news for you. No fruit needs to be avoided. And the best breakfast for a diabetic person is green smoothie and fruit, right? Or just green smoothies. And you can see the green smoothie recipe on in our recipe section on our website. It's also in our cookbook. Nisha asks, can you eat dates? Yes, dates can be eaten just like that and they can also be used as sweeteners. Why? Because they are foods that nature has made to, for us. Poonam Sharma says, I've read the book on reversing diabetes, but after giving up dairy, it hasn't got steady. Some days it's better, but not always. Okay. So look, it may be that you've read the book and you're doing 80%. Maybe there's 20% that you're not doing or something that you're missing here and there. So Poonam, I would highly advise consultations for you. Rangarajan asks, can fasting once a while help? You know, we have to think, what did nature expect from us? And if we were living in nature, there might be a day where we don't find any food. We are fasting. Or there might be days, I mean, in general, we are always doing intermittent fasting, right? If we live in nature. Because you can't eat before sunrise and you can't eat after sunset. Already that's only eight hours. That's intermittent fasting. So, or eight or ten hours, right? So, these are anyway good practices. But if you're on certain medicines or insulin, you better think about fasting. So this should be done with the help of someone. In general, when we are sick, our body tells us don't eat. Right? That's So we should fast when our body tells us to fast, if possible. Pooja asks, can I have mustard oil? So it's the same as olive oil or coconut oil. Oil is oil is fat and we should not have it. Uh, you know, Seema, I saw one question about uh, creatinine. Diabetes causes kidney disease. Therefore, it's one of the reasons that we should get free of diabetes. But if your creatinine is already high, what can what should we do? And the answer to that is, here, I would highly recommend consultations. We can lower the creatinine level depending on how high it is. But this can be controlled if it's not very high. And for this, we need to reduce the medicines. Also, uh, chronic kidney disease can be because of blood pressure and blood sugar. And so we need to work on both of these together. So I highly recommend consultations. There's Sorry, Seema, uh, that was one that I got. I haven't looked at any others yet, I, but I'll look while you're looking. Yeah. Uh, Rosie asks, I'm deficient in vitamin D. Doctors ask me to consume one vitamin D per thousand milligrams per day. Is there any side effect? Okay. Uh, thousand milligrams per day may not be enough for someone who is deficient. So I forgot to show you, but I'm going to show you right now by sharing my screen, how you can find out how much you should take of vitamin D. Okay, so uh, one sec. If you go to our website, and I'm just trying to go there. If you go to our website, and you go to try vegan, then there's a whole section on vitamin B12 and vitamin D. And these will tell you exactly how much to take. Now, everyone is different and so it may not be exact, but it will give you a good a guideline. So always check your levels because it says if your levels are this much, take this much and so on and so forth. So check your levels, take accordingly. But um, yeah, if you're, if you're already deficient, then 1,000 micrograms, 1,000 IU per day is not enough. Okay, doctor, can you also tell them how to get a consultation on the website? 
but there are a few questions on consultation. Oh, sure. Thank you for that. Huh? So I'm just going to share my screen again. And I already told you how to get a consultation. You can just click here. Oh my God. Yeah. And you open the consultation section and it tells you, you know, you, you can go to, is it a new consultation or a new consultation from overseas and it will guide you. But if you don't want to go through all that, you can even just go to this phone number and call and somebody will help you. That's Nupur. She will help you and guide you. And if you can't call or if you're from abroad, you can even WhatsApp or send a message and she will get back to you. Kalpana Swami says, I have read Dr. Shah's book and I'm following the same. My reports have drastically improved within three months. Congratulations, Kalpana. And I just want to tell you that, you know, when you're doing it at home, it can take three months. We usually have three month long consultations as well. But when you're doing it with us in 21 days, you will get results, a large amount of results, because we make sure that everything is done right away. Okay, there are two people who would like to know, Anju and Pooja, about, uh, uh, sorry, Subhasini and Pooja, about methi seeds soaked overnight in water and taken in the morning on an empty stomach with that help. Okay, so nothing wrong with methi seeds. That's a God-given thing. But to tell you the truth, you don't need to do all this stuff, right? Because so many people take methi seeds and do they get rid of their diabetes? No. So maybe if it controls your diabetes a little, great. You can take it, no harm done. But do everything else if you really want to get well. Uh, Chaitanya asks, is being underweight also a cause of insulin resistance? No. But people who are underweight, as I said, can have fat in their muscle cells. So if you've been eating oil and fat and fried foods and animal products all your life, you're thin, you are likely to have fat in your muscle cells, just like you're likely to have fat in your arteries and have high blood pressure. And so uh, you can still have diabetes even if you're not obese. Ranak asks, my creatinine is always low, lower than the lab range. Is that a warning of something? No, that is like you're doing everything properly. Congratulations. Uh, Pooja asks, uh, can I go back to normal food after my diabetes is reversed? Now we can do anything. But remember, if you go back to the lifestyle that caused the disease, then you will get the disease back. Just before coming on this, I was speaking to somebody who had cancer, right? And they had cancer and they did chemotherapy and surgery and chemotherapy and radiation. And of course, removed the cancer. But if you go back to the same lifestyle, you can get a recurrence, which is what happened. And so now they are making the lifestyle changes. We need to make lifestyle changes, right? Lifestyle changes means your lifestyle has changed. Then you don't go back. Akhilas, uh, can you suggest good vitamin D and B12 supplement tablets? So I don't want to promote any particular brand, although a few have been listed on our website. But uh, for vitamin B12, any methyl cobalamin, 500, not more. And for vitamin D, if you're starting with 60,000 IU, then um, all of them are good. Calcerol and um, what is it called? D-Rise and so on. And so on. They're all good. Uh, does Surinder ask, does replacing wheat with millets help in getting rid of diabetes? Replacing wheat with millets is really good because millets have more nutrients and more fiber, and so it's good. But just replacing wheat with millets will not get rid of diabetes. You have to do everything. 
Kauti asks, start somewhere. Just start. Wherever you can start, start. Gauti asks, as a vegan, what tests should we do to find out if we are okay or not? So no, whether we're vegan or not, we all have the same body. And if you go, and I'm just going to share my screen again. If you go to consultation, then we have a list of tests that you have to do. I'm just going to show you some, th that list. That's the test that I would recommend for everybody. Uh, so here it is. Essential lab report, CBC, CRP or ESR, liver function test, kidney function test, lipid profile, thyroid function test, homocysteine B12, vitamin D, and HbA1c. Now, this is just a simple list. It looks like a lot. But in India, most of the labs have panels. And you can do this for relatively inexpensive. Like, um, you know, there are these labs that just do panels like Thyrocare and SRL and um, Healthians and so on and so forth. And you can just check their prices. They all do it in the same kind of computer. We, all of them are reasonably good. Uh, Puna Mas, is it really safe to have so much of peanuts, cashews, almonds in the form of milk and curd daily? No, first of all, we don't need milk and curd daily, even alternative milk and curd, we don't need daily because milk is a food for infants, right? Now, most people who switch to a plant-based diet don't drink away milk because we have something much better than that, which is green smoothie. If you taste it, you'll know that it's far better. So you may need milk to have your curd or buttermilk or something that you're making with curd or, or a cheese alternative. We have a limit on nuts. We allow 10 nuts a day, right? So that's something that's enough for most of our recipes. But uh, if you're trying to have several recipes with alternatives every day, then you would have to use peanut curd. Peanuts are not nuts, they're legumes, they come from the pea family, and they can be used in a little more, a little more liberally. The nuts come in hard shells, and if we were living in nature, they would be very difficult to get to. They are not the food that nature has designed for us, therefore we eat less nuts. Madhu says I have high HDL and low LDL. But triglycerides are slightly high. Is it okay? Triglycerides are high. That means that you have eaten or are eating too much fat. So let's get that in order. That's why our recipes and our cooking classes are so great because they teach you how to cook without oil. And if you book a consultation with us, then we always give a basic cooking class which teaches the te techniques of cooking without oil. And you can find that in our event section and buy it individually as well. Chaitanya asks, how do we increase weight while having diabetes? It is kind of a deadlock because taking more calories increases sugar and taking less does not increase weight. Follow our guidelines. Initially, you lose a little bit more weight, but eventually, you'll get back to your best body weight. Renuka Shah says, I have BP for past 20 years or so I was told, and I've been taking medications for that. Now, last few months, I have T2 diabetes and now meds for that too. I want to get rid of both the medicines. Renuka, done. Just book a consultation and we'll get you going right away. Raminder says, what is asked, what is the signal that oral meds are no longer working and one needs to shift to insulin? You know, when you're taking medicines and over a period of time, your blood sugar is not getting controlled by those medicines. Then usually the doctors give you other medicines. And after a few trials of more and more medicines, they say, okay, now you have to start insulin. That's the sign. So when you have diabetes, here's what you should not forget. Keep checking your blood sugar. 
Like for example, Palak told the story of her mother and her mother came to Ahmedabad and found to her surprise that her, her blood sugar was 300. That should never happen, right? So because she was on insulin, she should have found that out before. So we should be checking our blood sugars regularly when we have these things. And if we have high blood pressure, we should check our blood pressure regularly. Uh, there's a question on, is it okay to eat the food that you're not allowed occasionally? Okay, we're all human beings, right? If you're dying to eat something that you're not allowed, first of all, we have two kinds of plans. You know, one, the first plan is the uh, reversal plan. And ideally, when you're trying to reverse, it would be best not to have the foods that are not allowed. Once you're on a maintenance plan, it's okay to occasionally have the foods you're not allowed because a healthy person's blood sugar will not go up when they have once in a while a bit of fried food. The reason everyone is getting diabetes today, and when I say everyone, I mean that one in four adults have diabetes today. So the reason everyone is getting diabetes today is because as a culture, we eat wrong food. But if once in a while you eat wrong food, our body has reserves and can handle it. Anju is asking, can we eat sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds daily? So Anju, I wouldn't recommend eating sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds fat fat like that, but use it as an ingredient. For example, today I made a big salad for lunch and I made a sunflower butter dressing. So, you know, usually in salad, you have oil, but instead of putting oil, I made my dressing with some lime juice and some um, garlic and salt and herbs and sunflower seed uh, butter. So better to use it as an ingredient because we are going to need fats to make our desserts. We're going to need fats to make our food more exciting. We're going to need fats to make our cheeses. So all these nuts and seeds can be used there. Renuka Shah asks, how can I check blood sugar at home? Oh, you can get a glucometer almost everywhere in any chemist shop or even online. Get a good glucometer and then it, it will give you the guidelines of how to check the blood sugar. Uh, doctor, there are a few questions on the 21-day uh, program that you're talking about. People okay. know that it's residential and how to go about uh, attending it. Okay, so I'm going to quickly share my screen again then. And look, if you go to our homepage, oh God, yeah, if you go to our homepage, then you can go to our event section from here. Okay, you can go here or you can scroll down here to a place that says see all events. I'm just showing you how you can learn about all our events, not just 21 day. So here you can see all our events. And if you go here right towards the bottom, our next 21 day retreat is in June and the early bird is end of April. If you go here, you will find all the details about our retreat our 21 day retreat. Okay. So I hope this helps. You have the dates and everything. And the next retreat, next 21 day retreat, sorry, I stopped the share, but the next 21 day retreat is in September. And June and September are more or less identical. June is in the beginning of the monsoon, September is in the end of the monsoon. We have a beautiful place. Uh, which is Swaswara uh, with, in Gokarna. You have to come to Goa and then we take you, pick you up from there. And it's 26 acres with 24 cottages. We have it all to ourselves. We have buffet meals. We have lots of um, activities and you can pick and choose anything that you like because we want to make it sustainable. So it's not like a school. It's just a fun retreat or a holiday where you get well. We do all the tests in the beginning and all the tests in the end and reduce medicines as you're going along. 
Uh, Kalpana wants to know if you recommend wearing a CGM device, a, a continuous glucose monitoring device. Kalpana, personally, I don't. And that's because people who have a CGM are obsessed with their blood sugars because you can see them all the time. We don't want obsession. We can easily reverse it without a CGM. Akhil wants to know if coconut sugar and date sugar is good. No, once again, Akhil, these are refined things. So dates are good and coconut is good and date sugar and coconut sugar are not good. Okay, doctor, I think those are all the questions that... Uh, were Thank you, Seema, for being so efficient with all those questions. Thank you, all of you, for asking all those questions.